Jeff, it's always good to see you. Um, happy Monday to you. And, uh, you know, we actually today we're going to the mailbag. Um, had a request for a uh, for a specific topic, and the topic is imposter syndrome. And uh, I don't know about you, definitely something that I've grappled with over the years, believe it or not. Um, I think first off, the key is acknowledging and uh, accepting, but uh, love to talk through it here with you today. And um, in preparation for today, I actually pulled up the definition so that everybody knows uh, what specifically we'll be talking about. But imposter syndrome refers to an internal experience of believing that you're not as competent as others perceive you to be. Uh, while this definition is usually narrowly applied to intelligence and achievement, uh, it has links to perfectionism and the social context as well. Would love to get your thoughts on imposter syndrome, Jeff. Is it something that you've grappled with? Uh, if so, how have you handled it? And uh, what would you share with our listeners today? Yeah, it's a great topic. And it's it's actually timely because I actually I just started a new role where um, the revenue organization that I'm uh, responsible for is larger than anything that I've uh, been responsible for in the past. And so um, it's something that, you know, comes to mind for me. And I think, you know, w when you think about you, even in job interviews right now, people value experience a lot. Like if you if you haven't done something before, people don't want to hire you. And I oftentimes sit there wondering, you know, how do how does anyone ever get an opportunity to ever do these things then? Right. Like there, there always needs to be people who are extending opportunity to people who have not done the thing before. If you think about everything that's happened in your life, everything you've accomplished, you had never accomplished those things until you did, right? I know that what I'm saying sounds really simple, but it's true. Like everything that you've ever done in your life was always something where you had to extend yourself in order to get to where you are today. Uh, for example, for me, like I ran the marathon in October and like, you know, a few years ago, uh, if you were to say, Jeff, you, you're a marathoner, I'd say, well, I have imposter syndrome because that's just not something I can do. But then eventually a few years later, I was able to do it. I figured it out. So I think that that's, that's an important thing. Another thing is that you need to understand that learning by doing is okay. You need to have a growth mindset and not a fixed mindset. It's okay to make mistakes and to learn from those mistakes on the job. That's part of life. That's how we've literally adapted in order to be able to accomplish the things that we accomplish. Um, you know, another thing too, and I realize that this is kind of the definition of the syndrome, but, you know, wh whoever is putting faith in you um, they saw something in you that maybe you do not see in yourself. We all have blind spots and our blind spots are usually things that are negative about ourselves, but we also have blind spots about things that are positive about ourselves. Sometimes we underestimate ourselves or we doubt ourselves uh, for faulty reasons or um, because it's just convenient to do so. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. I think the last thing, Carson, is, you know, always just invest in your professional development and have mentors. You know, I've, I've already run into things or challenges where I'm unfamiliar. There's parts of running uh, revenue organizations that I'm really good at, and there's parts where I'm less experienced. And where I'm really experienced, I do what I know works. Where I'm less experienced, I lean on people who know what they're doing and are more experienced, and I leverage my network and I leverage my mentors to get the answers to the questions, right? There's no shame in asking people for help. Um, in fact, if anything, if you have a great network, I'd rather have a, a, a leader who is maybe mediocre in terms of their knowledge, but has the network and the wherewithal to get the answers than someone who's pretty good, but also too prideful to fill in the gaps, right? So I think that those are probably the ways in which I would think about dealing with imposter syndrome. Um, you've been, you know, working at a, one of the biggest companies in the world, lots of intelligent, you know, people there. I'd be curious to hear about like how have you how have you thought about this uh, issue through the context of your own your own career? Yeah, I loved your thoughts, Jeff. I think you were spot on. And it's look, I've lacked confidence in where I was often uh, in my career, and oftentimes, like you said, just starting out in new roles. You know, I started out in new roles numerous times, whether it was at a new organization um, or you know getting a promotion or you know just being surrounded by a new set of circumstances and for me it's it's a struggle because and i think the key element like you said is you've got to acknowledge it first you've got to make sure that you identify like hey i'm feeling a certain way about you know my place in this world my place on this team whatever that might look like and so it, being able to acknowledge that and understand like there's a variety of reasons that this is happening um you know you're you're comparing yourself to 
uh, perhaps others, or uh, where you feel like you could or should be. Um, and that can be very daunting. Um, you know, I've shared this story with you before, and I won't belabor the point, but when I went out west and uh, did a big backpacking mountain climbing trip, um, it's pretty daunting when you go look at where you're going to go. Um, you know, you, you do that too much and you start to look ahead, you might uh, get some anxiety around it. But if you focus on landing the step one at a time, slow it down, I think that's the key element. You know, when you're having feelings of imposter syndrome, slow things down a little bit. Think about and focus on the relationships, really double down on the relationships because you know, sales, career, um, wh whatever it is, life, um, it's, it's really about investing in the relationships around you. And I love that you highlighted the mentor piece because you can really get some, some candid feedback, um, constructive feedback um, when you're facing some of these types of situations from a mentor who truly knows you who knows what you bring to the table, uh, what your passions and skills are and can be. Because I think the key element is when we're in these situations of imposter syndrome, we're doubting ourselves because of something that may or may not be completely out of our control. Um, you know, like you, like you said, look, I work for a very large company, so it's very easy for me to lack confidence when I walk into a room or even a virtual room surrounded by a lot of really brilliant people uh, that know a heck of a lot more about the conversation talk track than I do. Um, I look at myself as often just like I'm, I'm a sales guy. I, I've been in a lot of different industries verticals. So for me to come in in a very niche type of conversation um, is not necessarily my comfort zone. But what you what I find surprising a lot of times, too, is that when I talk to some of the super technical folks, um, you know, they may not be they may feel intimidated around salespeople because salespeople are usually very extroverted or at least uh, very, you know, put a, come across with a lot of charisma. And, uh, you know, some people, you know, we talk to a lot of very introverted folks sometimes and there may be on the other side of the table, um, some some lack of confidence as well. So I think the key element is just to you know to get grounded and feel good about you know where we are, uh, what we bring to the table. Uh, focus on your strengths. Uh, don't try to compare yourself to other folks. Um, you know it's real, and then get that candid feedback from people like mentors and other people on your team. Ask for feedback too. Um, I, I think you'd be surprised if. You you ask for feedback from some of the people in kind of your 360 realm, um, you know, immediate manager, uh, you know, some of the people on your team, customers, uh, when you ask like, hey, am I am I doing right by you? Am I adding value to the conversation? Uh, first off, they're going to appreciate the fact that you asked, but they're also going to give you feedback that's going to bolster your confidence in what you bring to the table. It amazes me every day uh, that people tell me that I'm having an impact um, on some of the things that they're doing, but believe it that behind the scenes, I struggle with the exact same things. Like what could I possibly bring to this conversation? Or am I going to handle this situation right? Or, you know, even just going into a meeting. Um, you know, I have these situations all the time, but for me, it's really helped to slow it down and uh, to just focus on landing the step and uh, to do so effectively, focus on controlling what I can, uh, knowing the value that I do bring to the table and trying to really focus on adding that value to everybody that I come in contact with so that at least I can have a positive impact and influence. And it helps to quell some of those feelings of inadequacy that I have. Um, the last thing I would say on that, again, when you acknowledge uh, that you're having these is trying to figure out like, where could this have possibly come from? You know, am I, uh, you know, was I raised in an environment where maybe I was, uh, didn't feel good enough? Um, you know, I was an only child. I always just wanted my parents to be proud of me. So I tried to do everything I possibly could uh, to do that. And, uh, you know, earlier in life, I may not have felt like I was achieving that mark. Um, today, it's really easy. You scroll a social media feed and all you see is how great everybody's life is. So you look at yours and you're like, man, my life sucks. Um, and so it's really easy to find where some of these feelings of inadequacy could be coming from. So uh, focus on controlling the controllables and landing the step. And I think it will quell some of the feelings of uh, imposter syndrome that you might be having. Great advice. Focus on your locus of control and stay off social media, except for LinkedIn. That's right. The greatest platform in the world. Yeah. Love it. Good stuff. As always, Jeff, thanks so much. Uh, 